everything is beginning to plug into everything else. You know, we're a skiing family, as I mentioned. And, you know, I wrote a, 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 a post a few years ago that got covered in a lot of skiing industry magazines. And I was describing what's going to happen with the world of skiing and snowboarding. Skis and snowboards in the not-too-distant future are going to get their own onboard chip technology. They will have connectivity to the internet. They will, they will have intelligence built in, and in, in, in which they will monitor what the skier is doing, monitor the velocity, monitor the mus muscle movement, and adjust the ride for more comfort, or more stability, or more aggressiveness, depending upon the profile of the skier. We are going to see extremely rapid evolution in sports technology as a result of what happens as Silicon Valley becomes more aggressively involved in all of the stuff that is part of our daily lives and as everything begins to plug into everything else. You know, when I went in and uh, spoke to the Sporting Good Manufacturers Association a few years ago, I had the CEOs of a whole bunch of, of, of manufacturers of sporting goods. And I was talking to them about this generation of kids and their expectations in the world in which they live. I wrote an, uh, an article for the magazine. And I wrote that if you think about this next generation, these kids leave, live, breed, learn, teach. They talk, they listen through a widely networked world that facilitates feedback on what they're doing in that world. And it's quickly and rapidly changing how this generation expects results and satisfaction from new products. This generation is unlike any generation we have ever seen before. This generation of kids expects interaction in everything they do. And as this trend unfolds in which everything around us begins to plug into everything else, their expectations of what they will do with sport will undergo a change the likes of which we have never seen before. You know, I was with the Sporting Good Manufacturers Association. I challenged them to think about the baseball bat of the future. Today, the baseball bat is a simple baseball bat made of wood. The baseball bat of tomorrow is going to have a bunch of chips built into it. It's going to have wireless connectivity built into it. It's going to be linked to a webcam. So when the kid's playing at the game, it's automatically recording his uh, swing speed, his swing style. It's automatically filming him so he can immediately upload the video to his friends because they are immersed in this, in this world of interactive technology like we've never seen before. And do you know what I said to the folks at the Sporting Good Manufacturers Association? Here's what we need to realize as we think about that wild and weird scenario. It's not bad, it's different. It's not bad, it's different. You know, our world is going to change. These kids are different. Their expectations are different. We look at them with our perspective of, of the way that things should be. And some of us might react to it negatively, thinking, well, you know, this is just too far out of hand. This is just too ridiculous. But it's not bad, it's different. And I want you to think about what's going to happen in your world. You know, I, I think it's not too far out before we have some type of golf ball that has a webcam built into it so that I, as the average golfer, you know, immediately get this interactive view as my ball flies down the course. And I can immediately share it with my friends and it immediately becomes a part of the game and immediately becomes a part of my historical record. Who are we to sit back and think that the technology and the interactivity that is going to be a part of the game will look anything like it does today? Particularly as this next generation gets involved and gets immersed and increasingly begins to shape the direction of the future. Do you know what happens as soon as I put a scenario up like this? The same thing that happens when I put a scenario up like this in front of a lot of my clients. So a whole bunch of us sit out in the room and we react, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. That's the dumbest idea I ever heard. Who invited this guy here? Who thought it would be a good idea to put such wild scenarios on the table in front of folks who are involved with a traditional game? I want you to think about this. I want you to you know, think about the future by looking a little bit to the past. Some of you might remember when the golf cart first appeared on scene, it was viewed as something that was going to ruin the game. You know, way back in 1997, the Christian Science Monitor, you know, you can read articles that purists, you know, are decrying the most noticeable post-war technological change in golf. The hordes of tech golf carts that are humming over courses. It's ruining the game. 
The former United States Golf Association president observed that, you know, if it keeps up, we should call the game cartball. Go back to the days in which GPS first appeared in the scene. And how many complaints were there that this was a form of cheating? This is something that wasn't right for the game. This is something we should not be thinking about. But look what happened with the golfer. Look at, look at the speed and velocity by which the golfer embraced the concept and made it a part of their game and made it a part of their everyday life and made it part of their everyday quest, you know, to get a few more yards and get a little bit more accuracy. Think how quickly it came to change the game. You know, the thing is, the future is going to come at you faster than you think. And your challenge in defining our future RPGA is what do you need to change to deal with the rate of change which is occurring. 